Well, hey there, welcome back. You're in for a treat today. I'm gonna get two engines running. Yeah, that's a world record. I'm gonna grab something off the shelf here and I got a, uh, a customer, as you could say, engine to get running, so stick around. So here's today's project. It is a five horse Galloway hit and miss engine with uh, some unique farmer fixes on it. Uh, apparently the ignition system uh, wasn't good enough. So uh, somebody took it into the modern age with a little micro switch here. And apparently this is the on and off and a car coil. So, I've had this engine for a couple years, I haven't really messed with it, uh, was going to sell it, and I'm like, meh, I'll make a video out of it. Got a little crack in the head here I'm going to have to repair. Somebody's already brazed it, but it's got a crack, it runs down into the front. Pretty common on these old things. And uh, this thing's also somewhat stuck. <coughs> yeah. Stuck it. Probably not terrible, but I'm gonna give her a go and I'm gonna do something different than what I normally do. Usually, I take all this hubbub and just rip it off and find the original parts and put this back to how it would have been originally. But for the sake of the YouTubes, I'm gonna see if I can get that to work. So, the first order of business is trying to get this thing unstuck. I'm gonna give that, give that a shot. I'm hoping I've got this compression release here on the side. I can spray right into the cylinder. And I'm hoping the piston's not too far forward blocking that and I can get some of this PV blaster in here and start letting it soak. Doing something. Now we'll see how that goes. Spray the valve down. Spray anything to do down, really. Can't hurt. Clean it up anyway later. This thing has original paint uh, underneath this ugly red. So I'm going to try to save the original paint. I'm going to strip this red paint off and hopefully it's got a lot of original paint, I'm hoping, and put this back down to the original paint. They look, to me, they look way better. But uh, we'll see. So I'm going to let that soak. And in the meantime, while we're soaking, I got this engine right here that a uh, feller dropped off to me that I uh, wasn't able to get running so I already done a little bit of diagnosis on it and uh, see if we can get her to run for him. So what this thing is is a little two and a half horse Hercules engine built for the Jaeger Machine Company in Columbus, Ohio. We went on a cement mixer back in the day. Uh, the guy dropped it off, uh, said he had magnet code on it, changed the head because the head that was on it was cracked from uh, freeze crack, done some other little things to it, 
and uh, hasn't been able to get it to run. Uh, looking at it before we took it off his trailer, things I noticed is that it was uh, ignition was tripping too early, firing too early, and it is firing. Oh, probably about the eight o'clock position, which is uh, too early for this thing. And the other thing that we got issues with is the exhaust valve is opening way too early. Now it makes sense to me, uh, he changed the head on it, and I'm assuming he changed uh, the head, probably the rocker arm too, and the rocker arm valve adjustment. And it could be even a tooth off on timing. Uh, so I'm gonna go and uh, adjust all that stuff, and uh, that really should be it, as long as that max hot, this thing should run. I'm gonna spin this thing over and you'll hear out of the exhaust a little kind of like a poof type sound. And uh, what that is is the exhaust valve opening too early, like I said, and letting the compression out too soon. Right there. That means, that sound means that this rocker arm is out of adjustment. Uh, it also could be off a of tooth on timing and it's allowing this exhaust to open too early and not let this thing get all the way up on compression on the compression stroke and fire. That's probably the main culprit for this thing not running. Um, I was also spinning this thing over and the valve, the intake valve, um, sounds like it might be leaking by a little bit. I'm hoping to not have to pull this head off to uh, lap the, the valves in. The guy had the valves done at a uh, machine shop, so they should be fine. Might just be a little piece of dirt or something um, doing that. But, that's what that sounds like. That's how I determined that the exhaust valve was opening too early. Is that sound right there? So as you can see, that's sucked in a little bit. I'm gonna see if this fixes the problem. I still think it's a tooth off on timing and I may end up adjusting the timing, but I'm just curious if uh, this will be enough to fix what's going on here. made it better. So where I like to have the timing on these things is the ignition at about five degrees before top dead center and then the exhaust to open at about 25 degrees past top dead center. Um, like I said this is firing about eight o'clock. Top dead centers horizontal here pretty much. Uh, so I need it to actually start firing somewhere in there, which again, that goes back to where I'm figuring about a tooth off. And uh, there should this here should not be run all the way out like it is. Uh, this did fix the exhaust problem as far as the exhaust opening too early, but that's still not right. So. It would fire here and probably would run. It tried to kick back every time, but it probably would try to run here. Uh, this lever here is the retard lever for the ignition. And uh, if I lift that lever up, this thing actually trips the magneto for the spark almost in the perfect spot. So I'm gonna get a little bit of gas here and squirt in the, uh, the carburetor here and see if this thing will run. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use a little bit of starting fluid. As I don't feel like walking over to the house to get the gas. That should be enough.
She runs, but I noticed another problem here. The detent wasn't uh, coming in like it should. And I'm noticing that the spring right here, that spring's entirely too heavy for this. And I'm testing the, the spring and the governor weights right now. That doesn't feel bad, but this uh, that little red spring down there is entirely too stiff for that. And uh, it's probably overpowering the governor would be my guess. Now this, uh, this little arm here has been changed because it was broke. So I'm gonna have to find a spring. I don't know if there's one in here or not. This box of parts came with it. So, got some more tinkering to do. entirely too stiff. I can't even move that. There's about all the more you need. There's a couple ways I can go about adjusting the timing on this. I can take this nut off, pull that shaft out, and move the timing gear. Or I can take the nuts off of the main bearing caps and just rotate the crank. I want to go for the, the later of the two options here and uh, take these main caps off and just rotate the crank to where I want it to. They both do the same thing. That's just what I feel like doing right now. All right, so what I'm gonna do is bring this thing up to where the mag trips and turn it back or ahead. I'm gonna turn it ahead of two. And I should have the ignition problem fixed. Perfect. Right there's where I want her to trip. That is perfect. Well, you're gonna have to wait till the end of the video to see this run, mainly because my uh, ADD is kicking in and I'm ready to get to work on that. And, I got gas tank sealer in the gas tank here. Got to let it cure, get the gas tank underneath of it and uh, fire it up and finish doing the fine tuning of it. So this is probably ready to run, just uh, needs some adjustment. So I'm gonna move it out of the way and uh, see if I can get this thing unstuck. Well, she's been soaking overnight with some PV blaster in her, so let's see if uh, all 200 pounds of me can unstick this thing. I'm going to go about it the uh, caveman way and try to just get some weight on the flywheels here to pull that piston out. Uh, the other option I could do is loosen up the bearing cap and rock it back and forth. But I don't want to do that because I risk uh, breaking the barrier of the bearing cap itself. So we're going to go with option A and uh, until I 
false fails and you might get option B. So let's see if this will free up. Yeah. PB Blaster, I tell you, it's amazing. Awesome. Let's spray some more on there. Told you it wasn't stuck too bad. Awesome. Well, that was anticlimactic. Well, now she turns over. We can see how this uh, ignition ignition works. So like I said, it's got a micro switch right here, a uh, little condenser, and then this here trips the switch. On the cam, there is a little doohickey right there that comes up and hits on this lever here to fire the micro switch which I'm assuming is what closes the circuit, energizes the coil, and makes it go spark. But I'm no electrician, so that's a guess. And I'm gonna try to figure out how to wire this thing up, see if it'll run. All right, wired up. I got ground to the battery charger. I got power to the coil, and I got a test light on the spark plug. Um, I think that's all I need. So let's see if she'll make spark. All right, well, anyway. all right so got the wiring figured out. Uh, down here did not work. That bad idea. Uh, when I turned the battery charger on, my lights would flicker. So, uh, deductive reasoning told me that that was wrong. So what I ended up doing is to the micro switch, I got the negative. Uh, this, I checked all this stuff with the, uh, the old uh, fluke meter. Everything works. Switch was good. That was good. Uh, checked the coil. Coil was good. So ground to micro switch. This switch is on and off power. Uh, positive from the battery charger that I'm using for power to the coil and then obviously the, the I checked the resistance of the spark plug wire to make sure it was good and it is and let me show you something power power when I move this little lever here I get sparky uh oh sparking where it shouldn't Bad spark plug. How about that? There we go. I like to take these gear oil uh, containers and after I use them, have the top cut off of them anyway. I use them to put gas in. So, we're going to get a little snort here. Yeah. The gas is going to pour out everywhere like I am. Got the uh, spark plug out. Put a little oil in there. 
It's still working. I'm just going to direct the end of it. Cylinder there. Let's see if that'll take off. Likes the gas. Kind of runs up. Well, we're going to go for attempt number two. I got this thing uh, strapped down because uh, I've been down that road when these things like to uh, take off, like that one about did. They turn into a bucking Bronco, and that thing probably weighs a thousand pounds, and I ain't going to be able to keep her under control. So I got me a little outrigger on her here, and she's strapped down, and I got a fuel tank hooked up to try to keep this thing running and I think that's really all I changed. So I'm going to plug battery charger in, give her some gas and then uh, should run. There's a compression release on this side over here. I'm going to put a little bit of gas and get right into the cylinder. So. It's open. I'll leave it open to start it and I'll close it and take off and hopefully I'll be able to get gas to come out of the gas can.
supposed to do that.
So I guess the old farmer uh, knew what he was doing. The ignition works. Now, I don't like it, obviously, because it looks like crap. But uh, every time this thing trips, it fires and it doesn't need to. And uh, as you can tell, this thing runs, but it doesn't run well. And hence is why I'm going to put it back to original. And I just happen to have some parts. That's a trip finger. And here is the original, if I can get it out, the original ignition. This thing here goes right there. And then that trip finger trips this little lever here like that. And on the other side has a set of points right there. And every time that lever trips, there's points go together. And when they go together and open, they make a spark. Well, this side is inside the cylinder and it does basically the same thing as the spark plug's doing, except for it's point sparking instead of a spark plug gap. So I'm going to put that there back to where it should be. The Trip finger goes on the push rod here, like so. That'll go there. Trip finger will catch, if I can find it here, will catch right there and trip the points. So that's a pretty simple fix. And then, uh, like I said, I think there's a lot of original paint underneath this. So I'm gonna try to strip this red off and see if I can uncover the original. Fingers crossed. But uh, that's all I'm going to do on this for today. I'm going to go get this thing running and do the fine tuning on it. I got the gas tank back in it. It's sealed up, doesn't leak. So I'm going to get this running so the uh, guy can come pick it up. And then uh, that'll be another video. So I'm going to make you have to come back to uh, watch the restoration of this. So hope you like it because uh, you're not going to get to see this thing finished, at least in this video. We'll need to make an adjustment on this trip finger here. It's 
not engaging the detent. It shouldn't be firing every time like it is. So I need to uh, adjust that. All right, adjustments are made. Let's see if uh, she'll take off this time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's always fun getting these things running. Like I said, I'm going to make another video of this. I'm going to go in more in depth with uh, stripping the paint off, getting the right pieces back on it, uh, fixing the head, the things that are needed to be done there. That'll be another video. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a long one. That's why I'm breaking this up into two. And this thing I'm going to call done, uh, other than slowing it down and getting it to fire a little more consistent. But uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you like this type of stuff, uh, I wish you would uh, please consider hitting the old subscribe button, giving her a like, and uh, give me a comment if uh, there's something in this shop that you see that uh, you want me to work on. Hint, hint. And uh, I'm going to continue to make some more videos. So, until next time, thanks for watching. Like I said, maybe think about subscribing and have a wonderful day.